By this point, you have a pretty good idea of how to graph an absolute value function using our translation rules. In this video, we're going to take that and we're going to tie in one extra kind of step involving a few different vocab words in our graphs. So I'm going to start by graphing each of these. And with this one, moving left to one, up two, our vertex is going to be right there. And then we're going to use our number out front, our slope, and go down three over one. That part hopefully is sounding pretty familiar. By now, um, I think you guys are probably okay on how to do that, I hope. Now, that's making the graph, and that's fine. But we're going to add on a few extra vocab words right here related to our graph. The first one is finding the vertex and naming where that actually is, and that's just a matter of giving an ordered pair where your vertex is. So in this problem, negative 1, 2 is our vertex. The axis of symmetry is a word you may have seen in Algebra 1, um, if you remember. But basically, I've talked before about how this graph right here is symmetric. Those two sides match perfectly. And if I were to draw a line right down the middle of my graph, it's going to slice it perfectly in half. So you can see on the same side, like on both sides of that line, you're looking at the same thing. That line is my axis of symmetry. So I want to know where is the line that's going to chop my graph in half. So this line right here is my axis of symmetry, and that is a vertical line. Remember, vertical lines are x equals, and that's at negative 1. So my axis of symmetry is x equals negative 1. It's the line that chops your graph in half. The two words at the bottom here, domain and range, we've talked about before, but not in the context of an actual graph. If you recall, domain is like all the x's that you use, and range is all the y's that you use. In order to do this graphically, this is kind of something that takes a little bit of practice. You probably won't get this the very first example you see. It comes with practice, and we're going to do it every type of graph we look at this year. Think about your x's right here. If I look at my graph, let's take care of the left side first. From the vertex, my graph is going down, but it's going left. It's going left, it's going left, it's going left, it's going left. If you picture, maybe like, if you just kept following the graph off the screen, if I wanted to use the x value of like 500, negative 500, my graph is eventually going to get to negative 500. It's going to go down, down, and down, but it's still going to the left. Your graph is going to hit everything going to the left. It's just going to keep angling this way. So if I wanted to use the x value negative 1 million, I may have to wait a while for the graph to get there going like this, but it'll eventually get there. I'm going to use all those x's. And the same thing's going to happen over here. This graph's going to go to the right, and it's going to keep going to the right while going down. If I wanted x equals 5,439, I can keep going until it hits there. So any x value I want, if I wait long enough, my graph is going to get to that x. The domain is all real numbers. There's our symbol from that from earlier. Every x value we could want is used. On the other hand, with my range, range is talking about the y values I use. So the y's are going up and going down. If you look at this graph right here, I'm going to put my marker right there. All the y values below my marker, that's positive 2, and below. So 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. My graph is going to hit those. You can see the graph's going down. It's going to keep hitting all the negative y values. But never will my graph come above this line right here. It's never going to hit y equals 3 because it's pointed down in both directions. It's never going to loop back up and get up here. So these y values are no good. It's only from 2, the vertex, downwards. The way that I write that is that y has to be less than or equal to 2. You'll never get a y value. 2 is right here. You'll never get a y value bigger than 2. It's 2 or less than that. That's allowed. The domain and range are a little tricky, and I'm very like used to kids needing, like you need to practice that. It's something that comes with time. Um, so we'll definitely be spending time on it in class. But I'm going to try to power through this second example here. If you're feeling adventurous, you can try it for yourself. Vertex is going right 3, down 1. So right 3, down 1 will be right there. My slope says 1 half, so I'm going to go up 1 over 2 in each direction. And I'm going to draw my graph here. The vertex on this one appears to be at 3, negative 1. The x of symmetry, the line that chops it in half right there, that's at x equals 3. Always going to be x equals, it's a vertical line. The domain, it's going to keep going to the right, it's going to keep going to the left, it's going to hit all the x's. Domain is all real numbers. 
for absolute value graphs, it's actually always all real numbers, um, unless you do something super crazy with it, which we won't cover in this class. And my range, the y's that we use are from this marker upwards. So it'll hit negative one for the y, and it'll go up in each direction, but it never, ever, ever comes down into this area. The way I write that is y is greater than or equal to negative one. Again, domain and range takes practice. We will do that extensively, but hopefully you're starting to see where I'm going with it.